Movies need to have a darker sense of humour. So here we are, Spider-Man 2, and as far as superhero films go, I gotta say this may very well be up there with the likes of The Dark Knight. Because if The Dark Knight is a definitive dark-hearted superhero movie, then Spider-Man 2 is a definitive light-hearted one. Sure, this film has its emotional and hard-hitting scenes, but let's be honest, as good as this movie is, it is incredibly stupid. But that's why I love it so much, because what we're about to take a look at is a film that, despite being so goofy, impressed critics across the board, which makes it a refreshing change of pace given how snooty some of them can be these days. And critics didn't just like this movie, they loved it. I mean, take a look at what Roger Ebert said, for example. Spider-Man 2 opens next Wednesday, or actually Tuesday at midnight, and I think it may be the best superhero movie I have ever seen. Wow. I mean, this is 2004, so this is before a lot of other great superhero films, but that's still a pretty bold statement to make. Because what he essentially said was that Spider-Man 2 is a better film than Superman the movie and Tim Burton's Batman. Was he right in saying it? Well, let's find out. This is Spider-Man 2. Okay, so we meet up with Peter as he's now working a dead-end job delivering pieces for his impatient boss. And sadly, he narrowly misses him. Oh. I know, I know, I love meaningless violence too. Well anyway, Mr. Aziz here threatens to fire him unless he gets his next delivery done on time. This is your last chance. You have to go 42 blocks in seven and one half minutes, or your ass is fired. Go! What's with the way he said that? Go! 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 <laughs> okay, this guy's clearly in the wrong business. I'm just imagining him peering in all manner of racing games. Go! Hey, you guys. No playing in the streets. Yes, Mr. Spider-Man. Am I the only one who's freaked out by those two? Yes, Mr. Spider-Man. Please continue. You're late. Chewing gum whilst on duty, eh? I hope you brought enough for everybody. I'm not paying for those. Boy, is he strict. So Peter is fired, so in order to make up his lost cash, he decides to pay the bugle a visit so he can sell more pictures of Spider-Man. Hey Peter, sell this one. Sure your reputation will be damaged, but you'd make a mint. I pay you because for some reason that psycho Spider-Man will pose for you. Spider-Man won't let me take any more pictures. You've turned the whole city against him. A fact I'm very proud of. Um, question. Why doesn't Peter just go to another newspaper? Not all of them will share Jameson's view on Spider-Man, a more national paper will probably pay more for the pictures anyway. Seriously, Peter should be like, Hey fuckface, write a positive article about Spider-Man or I'm going to the New York Times. And then Jameson will have to say, I'll give you 150. And then Peter can take further advantage by saying, And I want a pay rise, and I'm charging a thousand for each image. That's outrageous. That's business, bitch. You see, Peter's financial worries will be solved just like that. And it's made worse because that's one of the major themes of the movie. Throughout the entire film, Peter has little to no money. With a little negotiation, he'd be rich off his ass. Thank you, sack of shit. But hey, what's a Spider-Man movie without long, awkward conversations with MJ? Oh boy, yeah. What? Nothing. Peter, will you stop fucking around and just say you love this woman? Look, I get it, you don't want to be with her as you believe she'll then be in danger. But she was in danger a grand total of four times in the previous movie, and none of which were attributed to the two of you being in love. Actually, it doesn't matter if you're in love with her. By all logic, simply knowing her will put her in danger. The only way to guarantee her safety is to say goodbye once and for all, and you're clearly not up for that. So I say just have the sex. Do you want to say something? Okay, repeat after me, Peter. I love you. Saw your billboard on Bleecker. Isn't it funny? I'm really kind of embarrassed. 
Don't be. It's nice. I get to see you every day now. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was awful. Just say those three magic words. I like seeing you tonight, Peter. Okay, let's start off slow. I. I. Love you. Was wondering if you're still in the village. So yeah, Peter acts like a pussy as Energy responds by saying she's now seeing someone else. In other words, she's emotionally blackmailing Peter to make a move on her by treating her new boyfriend as a means to an end. Bitch. So Peter heads home and runs into his rather stereotypical Sorry. Eastern European landlord. Sorry he doesn't pay the rent. And don't try to sneak past me. I have ears like a cat and eyes like a rodent. <laughs> okay, how did that look on his face not turn into some kind of meme? It's too good. It's the face he'll pull for any occasion. Like for his passport photo, or his inevitable Oscar acceptance speech, or his meetup with the fellow leaders of the world. Fellow photoshoppers, I have set you a challenge. So the following day, Harry introduces Peter to Otto Octavius and his wife Rosie. Turns out Harry is funding Otto to run an experiment on fusion. An exponential increase in energy output. A huge amount of energy, like a perpetual sun providing renewable power for the whole world. Are you sure you could stabilize the fusion reaction? Well, let's see. I share the same name of an old comic book villain. Thermonuclear fusion isn't likely to be perfected for another 17 years. And since I'm happily married, I've got a lot to lose. So, yeah, nothing to worry about. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Peter, tell us about yourself. Do you have a girlfriend? Does his right hand count? If you want to get a woman to fall in love with you, feed her poetry. Poetry? Never fails. Tall and slender. Ugh, okay, this is what I don't get about this movie. Peter established he's not going to date MJ because he's Spider Man. Then why is he still trying to impress her? All he's doing is confusing the hell out of her. Well, okay, she's a bit of a dingbat anyway, considering she hasn't worked out that Peter is actually Spider-Man. Hell, she recognises his kiss at the end of the first movie. And even if she shrugged that off, how does she not recognise his voice? Tobey Maguire has a pretty distinctive one. I've not heard of anyone else who sounds even remotely like him. She's been given so many clues, I actually refuse to believe she doesn't know. Yes, I believe MJ, at this point in time, knows Peter is Spider-Man and that she is a cold heartless bitch who enjoys fucking around with Peter to see what lengths he'll go to to impress her. Man, this review's getting dark. I need something awesome I can't balance it. Uh, uh, ah, Bruce Campbell. Yeah, I, uh, come to see the show. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. I got news for you, pal. You ain't leading but two things right now. Jack and shit. And Jack left town. He's getting away! It's game action! Yeah. So Peter misses MJ's play and finds out that he can't use his spider web, so he begrudgingly takes a lift. Cool spidey outfit. Thanks. <sighs> Look, I've said before, people will recognize your voice. Change it a little or something. Better yet, change your personality completely. Then no one will second guess that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Cool Spidey outfit. It's not for sale, cockbag. Where'd you get it? From your mama's wardrobe. Hmm. Looks uncomfortable. Did you just fucking look at my junk? Do that again and I'll shove a spider web up your dickhole. Fuckhead. So on the following day, Peter arrives to Octavius' fusion demonstration as Otto shows off his... um... mechanical metal arm thingies. Tell you what, I'll give him names. Nitwit, Blubber, Oddman and Tweak. Tweak's my favourite. Precious tritium is the fuel that makes this project go. There's only 25 pounds of it on the whole planet. Well, wait a minute. If there's so little of it, why does anyone see this as a good investment? Won't you quickly run out and be out of business? Yeah. Harry White Tridium. 
How much energy did it produce? Uh, about two seconds worth. Yeah. Yeah, you, you spent millions of dollars on that. Don't you feel like a right twat? Seriously, what auto am I watching here? Otto Octavius or... What? What's going on? The bomb would explain a lot. Doctor, we have a successful fusion reaction. <laughs> okay, I'm no fusion expert, but from what I found out, fusion basically involves sticking two hydrogen nuclei together. But in order to do that, the temperature needs to be about, oh, 100 million degrees. To illustrate my problem, let's have a look at the demonstration's audience. See what I mean? But here's a shock. The experiment goes wrong as the reactor starts attracting all metallic objects towards it. Including glass for some reason. Yes, instead of trying to cover your face or seat cover when sharp shards of glass are hurtling towards you, instead, make this face. <laughs> so Otto is taken to the hospital, and whilst this next scene is great, take into account that kids who are big Spider-Man fans will be watching this. You enjoying the movie so far, son? Yeah, Dad. Oh, great. Seriously, you can tell this is Sam Raimi applying what he did so well in the Evil Dead trilogy here, but he feels so out of place in a Spider-Man movie. For a PG, this scene is scary as fuck. The way the arms move so quickly like snakes seeking their prey, the convincing screams of terror from the doctors, the total lack of music which gives the scene a real creepy, silent tone. If I watched this at the age of eight or something, it'd probably give me nightmares. But then again, it's kind of ruined at the end by this. No! So Otto escapes to the docks as the bugle thinks of a name for this new villain. Crazy scientist turns himself into some kind of a monster. Four mechanical arms welded right onto his body. <laughs> Guy named Otto Octavius winds up with eight limbs. What are the odds? It's almost like he's from a comic book. Wait, wait, I got it. Dr. Octopus. Uh, but, uh, I like it. Of course you do. Dr. Octopus. New villain in town. Doc Ock. And if ever a palm parody was made, the character's name writes itself. But given the tentacles, it'd probably be a Japanese production. One fucked up Japanese production. So Jameson is shot at a photographer, so he hires Peter to attend a celebration for his son, who is an astronaut. Could you pay me in advance? <laughs> Okay, that's the best laugh I've ever heard, ever. Seriously, if there's something either too stupid or too cheesy in an upcoming movie I review, I'm using that clip. I truly, deeply love you. <laughs> you serious? So later that day, Peter and Aunt May go to the bank in hopes of acquiring a loan. It doesn't go well. But out of nowhere, Otto shows up and starts robbing the bank in the most subtle manner he can think of. Put your arms up! All of them! Woo! Look at the distance he got on that one! So Peter suits up as they take the fight outside, but Aunt May gets captured and is hanging on for dear life. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, later that night the party is underway as Jameson's son is announced to the crowd. The committee for the Science Library of New York is pleased to present our guest of honor, 
He's the first man to play football on the moon. Uh, <laughs> um, you do realize a man hasn't been on the moon since 1972, right? I don't think any American president would fund a trip there so some guy can play football on it. Well, maybe this guy. Actually, this movie was made when he was in power, so yeah, actually, so it makes a lot of sense. But it turns out the guy that MJ was seeing is his astronaut as he announces their engagement. So Peter goes to her in an attempt to reconcile. He fails. It's too painful. I've been reading poetry lately. Whatever that means. Day by day, he gazed upon her. Day by day, he sighed with passion. Day by day, he remained a virgin. And quite understandably so. By the way, John has seen my show five times. Harry has seen it twice. Aunt May has seen it. My sick mother got out of bed to see it. Even I fucking saw it. What Mr. Moncrief said, his voice alone inspires one with absolute credulity. Boo! Get your tits out! I was arrested, but I was there for her. So a doctor, who I swear is a hippie by night, judging by his shirt, helps Peter to understand that maybe his time as Spider-Man is up as he continues to lose his powers. And after we see Peter talking to Uncle Ben, how he's able to do that, I've no idea. Peter's like, fuck responsibility, and walks merrily down the street to raindrops keep falling on my head. Wait, what? Sleeping on the job, raindrops are falling on my head. <laughs> What's with this cheesy montage? And why this song? And Butch Cassidy much? I mean, okay, this is to accentuate Peter's carefree mood, but... <laughs> this scene is so cheesy because of it. <laughs> Just go all the way and have Peter sing along himself. Maybe even with his own made up lyrics. Raindrops keep falling on my head. After dreaming about MJ, I found web on my bed. Point two three electron volts. Look, there's only one way to finish this scene. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Wait, it's a piano, now you're fucking dead. So yeah, we cut to Harry still obsessing over Spider-Man when he feels an unusual tremor. Hello, Harry. Kill Spider-Man, we'll give you all the tritium you need. A second thought, bring him to me, alive. How do I find him? Otto, what the hell are you doing? Don't make a deal with him, just say, give me the tritium or rip your fucking balls off. <laughs> but no, instead Harry asks Otto to give him Spider-Man for the tritium and like a complete idiot, he agrees. Meanwhile, Peter's heading home when he runs into a burning building and heads inside to save a trapped child. Jesus Christ, man, how hard did you throw that kid? <laughs> and if that's not bad enough, Spider-Man is actually saved by that same four-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> but after learning there was someone who didn't make it out, Peter decides it's time to stare blankly out of a window for a bit. Am I not supposed to have what I want? What am I supposed to do? Well, not talking to yourself would be a good start. Um, would you like a piece of chocolate cake? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a trick, Peter. It's space cake. I mean, I mean, look at her. She is so on drugs. Look, I'll even prove it to you. <clears throat> Miss, what are you right now? Hi. See? And a, a glass of milk? That would be nice. Peter, I'm betting you it's not from an animal. Okay. So after little miss anorexic clears up, she lets Peter know that Aunt May left a message. And as it turns out, she's saying fuck you to the government and has begun packing. And Henry Jackson across the street is giving me a hand and I'm giving him five dollars. Five bucks? That's like three quid. <laughs> Child labor is the future, people. They're global and work cheap. Okay. You take Spider-Man's pictures, right? I used to. 
Oh man, if even little kids know Peter took Spider-Man's picture, why hasn't Peter been interrogated by someone yet? You'd think someone would say to themselves, Hmm, so this fella has the exact same build as Spider-Man. He's the only man to ever get a clear photograph of Spider-Man and just so happens to share his exact same voice. Hello? Daily Bugle? I got a shocking revelation as the human photographer Peter Parker is. He's Spider-Man's twin brother. Hello? You'll never guess who he wants to be. Well, considering who we're just talking about... Spider-Man! You don't say! Well, he knows a hero when he sees one. So Peter decides it's time for Spider-Man to make a comeback as he heads up on a rooftop with a look of determination on his face. Well, it's determination all the shits, I can't be sure. Come on, Peter! You can do it! Yes! Yes! You're doing it all with the anti-gravity is on. Oh, That's right, Boo! You did it! You beat him! Peter? You 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 okay? I I, th I think he's dead. Well, that was no, come on, how can you get up after that? How could you simply walk off where only Wily fucking Coyote could survive? Maybe if you were still Spider-Man I'd buy it, but you're supposed to have no powers at this point. Still funny as hell though. <laughs> My back. Get back on, badass, you have to practice. Screw you guys. Hate you guys. So MJ and Peter meet up in a coffee shop and something odd is going on here. Anyone remember in my Casino Royale review when I pointed out Eva Green's wacky pupils? When I'd say, Migo, come take it. That's what this is about. All you're going to do now is lose more. Now look at Kirsten Dunst. I'm saying... I... Uh, I thought I could be there for you, Mary Jane. So the pair are about to have a smooch, but Peter's spidey sense kicks in as Otto arrives on the scene. Peter Parker. Well, hang on a minute. Octavius is there to interrogate Peter. Why the hell did he throw a fucking car at him? All right, Peter. Tell me where Spider-Man is or the girl gets it. Oh, oh, shit. Didn't really think that through, did you? So MJ gets kidnapped, again, and Peter is not pleased. That makes me mad. So Otto and Peter take the fight down to a train, but Octopus speeds it up as it edges ever closer to the end of the track. Oh, hang on! The train can go 120 miles per hour? Why would a train in New York City need to go that fast? Great Scott Money! We reached 120! We're so fucked! Damn Raymond needs camera work. Any more bright ideas? Wow, what an asshole. He's only trying to save your life. I got a few. Yeah, it involves using you as an anchor. Yeah. So Peter manages to stop the train as all the commuters give him the shittest crowd surf imaginable, trying their best not to grab a feel, and look upon him without his mask. Good to have you back, Spider-Man. He's mine! You want to get to him, you got to go through me. And me. Me too. Don't forget me, ha! So Otto takes Peter to Harry, and after giving the trillion to Otto, Harry moves in for the kill. First we'll see who's behind the mask. I can look into your eyes as you die. 
Oh, Peter, why did you have to be Spider-Man? I was hoping you were going to be Louis Walsh. That way I could avenge my father's murderer and kill an annoying prick at the same time. Harry. Where is she? Where is he keeping her? Uh, why the hell would Harry know? At what point did Octavius ever tell Harry where his base of operations was? Nobody knew. But check this out. Despite the fact that Harry shouldn't know, they edit it in a way to make it look like he knows. Harry, please, I've got to stop him. And... They cut before I can answer. So we as an audience assume Harry told Peter off screen, which in turn covers up the fact that Harry couldn't have possibly known the answer. Bravo, Remy. You devious bastard. So yeah, Peter arrives at Otto's base, wherever it may be, as Spidey starts to kick some ass. Uh, <laughs> I think you've won, Peter. Look, he isn't even fighting back. But mommy, I don't want to go to school today. <laughs> but wait a minute. Oh damn, I'm just gonna kick some ass. Go on, girl. <laughs> ah, see, that's what I get for having faith in you. So Peter pulls the plug, but it looks as though the machine isn't stopping. So Peter goes to Otto in hopes of him regaining control over his. Uh, Artificially intelligent tentacles. I won't. You once spoke to me about intelligence. Oh man, he's got a metal claw wrapped around his neck. Don't you think you should sound a little bit more like you once spoke to me about intelligence? That it was a gift to be used for the good of mankind. On a different subject matter. Do you have something for a sore throat? That it was a gift to be used for the good of mankind. A privilege. Uh, go back to earlier. Intelligence is not a privilege, it's a gift. <laughs> he just totally contradicted himself. Intelligence is not a privilege, it's a gift. A privilege. Think of your mind, man. Is intelligence a gift or a privilege? Whatever it is, you clearly don't have much of it. So MJ finds out Spider-Man's identity, and after gawping at each other for a bit, we get the funniest reaction shot in cinema history. Get ready for it in three. Two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Fuzzrudda. That there's the true power of voice. <laughs> I mean, that's the first Bilbo should have pulled in Fellowship of the Ring. So Otto comes to his senses and tears down the machine, only to go down with it himself, as Peter and NJ retreat to safety. And God only knows what that web is connected to. <laughs> so, yeah, now that NJ knows Peter is Spider-Man, it should alleviate some tension. Sure, it wasn't what Peter had in mind, but maybe some good can come of this. This is the first chance the two of them can be 100% honest with each other. I mean, it's not as if MJ knew all along or anything. I think I always knew. All this time. Uh. Ash. Yeah! <laughs> Music to my ears. So after Peter says the two can't be together for the ten billionth time, we cut back to Harry as he senses something close. Who's that? Son. I'm here. Be strong. Avenge me. Avenge me! No! Ah, yes, we get another Willem Dafoe slow mo moment. Avenge me! So Harry finds Norman's green goblin supplies. Even the formula, which seems odd considering we never saw Norman make another batch, as we cut to MJ's wedding where she plays runaway bride, leaving her now not husband stood up at the altar. Oh yeah, no talk with the guy to explain how you fell or that you couldn't go through with it. No, just leave him there. He'll be alright. It's not as if guys have emotions or anything. <laughs> so, MJ, what's your reasoning for all of this? Had to do what I had to do. You ungrateful bitch! Well, what's the matter? 
So MJ shows up at Peter's door, so now that the two are together, maybe finally they can consummate their relationship. You shouldn't be here. Good God, Peter, can't you just play along? She wants to have sex with you. Can't you just be an inconsiderate sex starved jerk for once in your miserable life? Just do it already. <gasps> they got to first base. So a siren wails in the background as Peter's off to fight some more bad guys with his lady by his side who'll support him through thick and thin. Though she'll draw the line at eyeliner. The end. So yeah, that's Spider-Man 2. And despite prejudices against MJ, this really is a fantastic movie. First, let's look at the cast and all of the actors from the first film continue to shine here. Tobey Maguire truly does make a great Peter Parker and all of his co-stars make great work of their given characters. James Franco is especially good in this. You can really see the torment that Harry feels over his father's death and his desire to kill Spider-Man. Even though I never understood why Peter didn't just tell Harry the truth as to what happened. Harry's like, you kill my father. Why didn't Peter just say, no, I did not kill your father. He just sort of accidentally killed himself. Even if Harry didn't believe him, it would have made more sense for him to at least try to explain what happened, but he never does. Now the sporting cast do a fine job here too, but J.K. Simmons as Jameson steals the show here for me. He is such a delight to watch, and I can't imagine anyone else playing him. How you can make a character so full of himself and so likeable at the same time is just testament to great acting. If Jameson ever makes future appearances in Spider-Man movies, they gotta get Simmons to play him again. I can't imagine anyone else doing him justice. So returning cast members aside, I gotta say, there is a distinct lack of any new ones. Sure, there are a few new characters, but apart from Otto, they all feel underdeveloped. You take Otto's wife, for example. How come she didn't play a larger role? Sure, she died, but Otto shows little to no grief over this. There is literally one line about her after her death. You'd think someone as important as a wife would play a bigger impact upon your motives. Unless, of course, you were a cold, heartless dick, but as privy to the scenes the two of you shared, you could tell they cared for one another. So that was odd. Another character that you'd think would play a bigger role is the astronaut. Now Nostalgia Critic already mentioned this in one of his own videos, but this guy is Jameson's son, MJ's boyfriend, and a bloody astronaut. And all I considered, I honest to god can't even remember his name. Seriously, Mr. Aziz was more developed than him. I'm not joking. And he was only in the movie for the first five minutes. So yeah, pointless characters aside, I can't really fault this film otherwise. The fights are spectacular, the special effects, while sometimes dated, are pretty damn impressive for 2004, and Sam Raimi's camera work is astonishingly good. How he gets these kind of shots is beyond me. He is a wizard behind the lens. Then you got the film's sense of humour, which I really like. I think they captured the right amount of goofy here. Spider-Man 3, they went a little overboard. Okay, maybe they sunk the ship with that one, but here you can still laugh at the absurdity of what's being said, and you can tell the cast were having fun with what they were given. Now, here many consider Spider-Man 2 to be the best in the trilogy. Do I agree? Honestly, I find it hard to say. I think I hold all the films in equal regard. Yes, even the third one. I'm one of the few people who actually liked it. Emo Peter and all. But if you are looking for the most complete, well-rounded film with a little bit of everything, yeah, Spider-Man 2 takes the cake. It's action-packed, it's funny, it's sad, and its villain is especially good. Alfred Molina makes a fantastic Doc Ock. He plays it all wise and friendly as Otto and all threatening and smarmy as Doc Ock. That's not to mention he's right up there with the likes of Hugh Laurie getting rid of his British accent. <laughs> I wish I could do that. So yeah, Spider-Man 2 is brilliant. It's definitely a contender for the best superhero movie ever, and is easily a worthy successor to the 2002 film that started at all. If you haven't seen it yet, you're missing out. Now as said, it is a stupid movie. Then if you don't believe me, maybe this will help. To play us out, I present to you the many faces of Spider-Man 2. Till next time. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, takes a dump in a coffee can. Plays some games with a grudge, gonna shit out some anal fudge. Look out, here comes some shitty games. 
Alcohol is his power source. Takes a piss like a drunken horse. Climbs a wall, then he falls. This game sucks his spider balls. Oh no, he's playing the shitty games. When he plays his games, he feels so ashamed. He shoots web from his wrist, but now Spider-Man's fucking pissed.